Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Mark the Pond Advisor and today's video is all about the summer update of Pond College. Let's get started. So as you can see, the Pond College gardens are in full bloom. It's the summer months in 2023. And we've had a lot going on since the last Pond College update. And I'm gonna walk through the gardens and show you what's been going on. I just thought I'd give you an overview. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And this is Pong College in the middle of the UK, Northamptonshire, and we're here to inspire and educate the world on ponds and water features. So regular viewers will have seen this water feature before. This was built by Daniel from Brit Ponds. It's right outside in the car park. It's a lovely disappearing waterfall. What I wanted to show you is the plants are looking superb. You look at that fern on the right hand side, it looks great. Come on Luna, let's go and have a look through the gardens. So what we've got in the gardens is we've got a great big rainwater harvesting system. And as you can see, we've been using a lot of the rainwater. So this isn't running full flow. What we've got is we've got a great big, huge reservoir. Underneath the lid there is where the water comes into here. But we're, we've been extracting the rainwater and feeding all the plants and the water features. We've got a simple moss garden. This is a damp area that is a bit of training, a bit of um, inspiration and see what happens here in the Pond College Gardens. Then we come on to the Serencinas. You look at these Serencinas, they're looking absolutely fantastic. Look at those trumpet flowers. These are carnivorous plants and they eat insects. So they don't want a lot of nutrients around the base. It's just literally they're growing in peat. If you want any more information about growing these types of plants, then have a look at the videos. Now we come on and you can see we've got some lovely painted urns. Regular viewers will know what's going on. Then we've got some fish. I went to Japan in February and these are some of the small Tosai and Nisai from that trip. This is the main stock tank. We've had, we haven't had any problems with any of these fish coming in. If you imagine these guys have all come in from Japan at 60 hours in a plastic bag. If you haven't seen this Torrogate, look at this. This is beautiful work. This was done by Wayne from Olympian Water Gardens and look at it. It's not been painted, but it absolutely sets the entrance off to the Pond College Gardens. And we come through, we've got the education, we've got the aquariums on the left-hand side. And these ones I've been not topping up. This side have not been topped up. So you can see the, the amount of evaporation. I topped this up the other day from the rainwater harvesting system because it was the same level as these. So as you can see, we've got more painted urns and the lockdown pond is looking good. I'll take you over there in a second, but let's go over and have a look at this Stillwater Wildlife Pond. So what we've got here is we've got the Stillwater Wildlife Pond and you can see we've got some beautiful water lilies. It's one of my favorite ones here at the Pond College Gardens. This particular aquarium or garden aquarium is for um, literally my ramsorn snails so they're red ramsorns they come in from america and i'm playing around with the different types of red ramsorns at the moment now we come on to the little fish pond all of these fish have been bred in the lockdown pond to give them something to eat these love feeding out of the hand sorry about the reflections of luna in the grass but we are talking about glass. Let me move over here. So all these fish have come out of the lockdown pond. As you can see that they're different sizes, but they're all the same age. Isn't that crazy? All of the filtration is from all of these wetland plants. So we've got floating islands. If you want any more information on how to plant these floating islands up, have a look at some of the other videos that we created. As you can see, some of them are looking really, really good. I love this time of the year because everything is in full flower or it's gone over and we've enjoyed it. Now let's go on to the lockdown pond and see what's going on in here. So this was the first pond that I built here in the Pond College Gardens and as you can see, it's looking great. This particular pond is based on the large pond kit and as you can see that there's a dragonfly flying around there now. All the plants are looking perfect. The irises are going over slightly. These are white pseudochorus. You can see I've left this clover. This clover looks really good, really, really natural. This stone out the back is where the edge of the liner is. So these hostas and all of these plants in this area are in sort of like a, 
um, an aquatic planting zone. So the edge of the liner, I built it as a rectangle and you can see all of these plants are looking really, really good. This pond is three years old and as you can see, they've got an emperor dragonfly flying around at the moment and commanding the space. Lots of different water lilies and as you can see, the fish are really looking good. I actually had to put a fish, one more fish in here just recently because it was one of the fish that we got from Japan and I took a real good liking to it. It's the yellow one in the middle of the shot now. And the reason why I like this one is it's because it's got pink eyes and long whiskers and it's also got a little bit of an attitude. So I actually put it into the Koi Palace, which is a big pond that we built in March, but my big old girls that are 19 years old and 15 years old haven't seen a small fish like this so we had to bring her and put her in the lockdown pond but she's doing a lot lot better now she's in the lockdown pond we've got the dragonfly display team flying around here at pond college hopefully you can see that i'm certainly enjoying it it'll come back around now there you go real close up maybe it's too fast hopefully it'll perch having a look it's a really really muggy day today still no wind perfect flying conditions for the dragonfly as you can see it's hunting hunting around looking for any anything oh it just had a look at that but didn't catch anything so it's amazing this size pond will actually attract big dragonflies like that one it i think it's actually a southern hawker by looking at it a bit more because it's not got a curved abdomen as you can see luna the pond dog she loves coming around and feeding the fish with me every single pond she's got a spot to go on this particular patio pond hasn't been topped up and you can see it's real real lovely natural we put a lot of waste in this pond believe it or not just again to see what's going on there's lots and lots of insects and stuff it's another still water wildlife pond but doesn't that look absolutely delightful for wildlife? We didn't do hardly any maintenance on this patio pond. It is all aquatic planting and very, very natural for the British wildlife. Lovely type for minima flowers have just popped up in the last week. They look really, really good. This is a reed, not a rush. A lot of people think that they're bulrushes or miniature bulrushes, but actually they're a reed. They're not a rush, reed mace. What we've got on the lockdown pond is we've got some irises mixed in these lovely white flowers we've also got some marsh orchids down there i don't know if you can see lovely marsh orchids that have been propagating by seed for a number of years and they're in amongst the typhus here so this one here is typha latifolia variegata and there's a load of damselflies in there at the moment i don't know if you can see through there there's actually a banded damselfly Let's see if we can get that to fly. Look at that, beautiful damsel. Let's just enjoy this for a, for a second. Beautiful water lilies, beautiful dragonflies, beautiful damselflies, and it's a beautiful day. It is gonna rain this afternoon. We are gonna have thunderstorms and it's very, very close. A lot of people don't like it. We have the aeration system on at night to provide that vital oxygen in the early morning before we actually get here. And also it, it provides a little bit of protection against the predators here in the Pond College Gardens. We are open farm countryside in the middle of the UK. So potentially we could have mink, we could have otters coming and having a look. So the aeration system actually provides a little bit of cover. So now we come on to Charlotte's DIY garden. And as you can see, Luna knows exactly where the fish are. She knows where to feed them. The fish associate her with food as well. So, you know, she's, I think she thinks that she's a fish. She knows where we feed those. And what we do is we essentially feed the fish at the back of the Veronica Becker Bunga. This is brook lime. It's got lovely blue flowers if Luna doesn't trample them all. So this is brook lime and the fish associate Luna with, with food because we put quite a bit of food on when Luna's around. You see, they absolutely love this. These guys haven't been fed all morning, so they're enjoying the food, they're enjoying their breakfast. I did actually put a little bit too much on the pond there for all of these guys. There's probably too many fish in this particular pond, 
but we will do a drain and clean on this in the next couple of months and um, remove all of these fish and, and put them into different ponds. So I'm not too worried about having too many fish in here. As you can see, the water clarity is perfect. The plants are doing great. The biological filter is at the back there. You can't even see it. It comes around the corner. The periwinkle's just gone over. You can see the last few white flowers. The saxifrage are going over. The ragged robin, you can see that that's still sort of like hanging on to a few flowers the pink flowers i'm not sure if you get in into focus what i want to do is i want to make sure that these water features are sustainable we're playing around with them so it does look a little bit brown at the moment apart from a few plants in it but it still looks good we've got this on a timer every single hour during the day this is coming on for 15 minutes now we did set it at sort of like coming on a few times a day but it wasn't enough and as you can see knock the moss back it's not dead but the moss isn't vibrant, it isn't sort of like green and lush. You can see that we've got weeping water all over the place on this. Essentially what feeds it is we've got a series of pipes all perforated. It's the suction hose that we've drilled a load of holes in and it creates that lovely drip effect. As you can see, Luna loves the fish again. They've eaten all the food that I just put on. So uh, let's put a bit more on, see if they want some more food, but actually I think that they're eating. What I've got in here is I've only got four fish. What I didn't want to do is I didn't want to have too many fish. So they come over asking for food. I want these, this to be a relaxation place. This is Freddy's water feature from Eco Skate Water Gardens. This is a lovely little pondless waterfall. It's coming up to nearly two and a half years old. And now we come onto the Builder Pond pond. And as you can see, for regular viewers, the patio pond isn't working and also the stream isn't working at the moment. What we're actually doing is we're doing a wet test on this. We've got a leak. We think that we know where it is, but we're just literally doing a static test, which is the first thing that you need to do when you're trying to find a leak. We've got the aeration on to make sure that the fish have got the vital oxygen. If you've got pumps off, you need that oxygen going in. You need that aerator. The pond's not looking its best. One, because we've had a leak, so we've been topping it up. So we've been having a lot of blanket weed issues with this particular pond. Um, there's no filtration at the moment. We've just got aeration on there just to keep the fish alive while we're trying to find out where the actual leak is. We actually believe that there's a number of couple of, couple of leaks We've got one at the back of the biofalls, which is looking ugly at the moment because we've been doing a little bit of work. So at the back of here, we've got a leaky fitting. This was built in one day with 12 newbies, people that are learning how to build ponds and water features. And probably what we'll end up doing is ripping this out and rebuilding it as part of a build a pond day in September. And if you want to come along to that, everybody's invited. Got some more news about that coming up later on in the video. Now what we do is we move on to the NRG waterfall. Regular viewers will have seen this before multiple times because after Freddy's pondless waterfall, this was the second one that we put in. It was um, something that we're playing around with, like the Zen Garden. There's a number of different things that I've done, changed, moved, also what's happening at the moment is you can see there's a bit of blanket weed in these bowls. So what I don't like is I don't like that string algae. So what I've actually learned from doing the Koi Palace is if we put biological media in those bowls, when the features switched off, the biological activity in those bowls, because they're static, because they hold water, will minimize the amount of blanket weed that is in there. So I've actually learned a lot from having this water feature in. So as you can see, the blanket weed is sitting in there and it becomes unsightly after a while. What happens is when the feature's off, the bowls just sit there stagnant with blanket weed growing and festating. There's no biological activity. Um, it's just simply like a bare line of pool. There's, you're gonna have blanket weed issues. Even if you put treatments in, you'd have to put a lot of treatments in. You'd have to do a lot of attention. Um, so the best thing to do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create those into biological active bowls. As you can see, the, the, the bottom pool has got a little bit of blanket weed in, but we've got some lovely 
ranunculus in there. That's buttercup. As you can see, it's a lovely, lovely feature. We've got the damp cave. We've got lovely creeping thyme or carpeting thyme on the left-hand side that just gets better and better every year. We've got a rose on the right-hand side that's been looking good. And it's looking great. It really is this time of the year. The only thing that I would recommend this particular garden is watering it more. A lot of these plants in this berm are needing a lot more water. You can see the Scottish moss and the lime moss are in flower, but as you can see, they're yellowing a little bit from the lack of water. Now we move on to the tranquil garden. As you can probably hear from my voice, now it's more tranquil. We've got a lovely pot full of miniature water lilies. This is a patio pond that I've had for a long time that's just still, just lots of miniature water lilies. And now we've got the small stone garden. This emulates a glacial melt, completely different atmosphere than the NRG water feature. This is all small stone. No stone in here is more than 25 kilos. Again, this was inspired by a trip to Wales and Luke was the guy that put this in. Looks lovely. We've got lots of different plants in flower. This is the most sheltered garden in the actual Pond College Gardens. We've got a number of different bowls. We've got some bamboo and some other features in here. I love the way it draws you in. Also got another patio pond over here, which is in pretty much the shade all the time, which is lovely. We've got Sagittaria Natans in here. And as you can see, it's a lovely, lovely patio pond for the shade. Again, just still water, loads of aquatic plants loads of aquatic insects and uh, and it looks really good as you can see we've got a communal area we've been having multiple barbecues here in the pond college gardens now we come on to the owl pond so what we've got in here is we've got a number of native rud in here these are a little bit more timid they're not as ornamental and the dog terrifies them they're native fish so they're not ornamental fish this was just some fish that we took out of, a, of one of our customers' ponds. You can see they're starting to come up now. I haven't fed them while the dog was in there. They're starting to come up. You can probably just see the ripples on the, on the video. They're like trout. They're a native fish. They're not ornamental fish. But that's a lovely owl pond. The reason why it's called the owl pond is because we've got those wooden carved owls. We've got Phalaris picta next to this particular pond. It is a bit of a thug. It can go through liners, so you've got to be very careful. And also we've got a toad house. It's not really the ideal place for a toad house because there's no real vegetation around it, but it's a damp area in this sun. There may be something underneath there. I'm not going to disturb it if there is. This is a little bit of a wild section. As you can see, Luna is in the bank. So now we come on to the spillway bowls, some lovely spillway bowls. These are available as a kit. This is a DIY version, and also at the top, you can have a fl flame coming out of that top one. Beautiful in any water garden. You can have any of these three on their own or as a combination. These are modular systems, so you can add or subtract whatever you want. All The only thing that you need to worry about is the, the amount of water in motion. And as the water feature gets bigger, you want more and more water in motion. So. This particular feature is on an Aqua Basin 45 and it holds about three times the water in motion. So it's a lovely feature. Now coming to the left, you can see the lockdown pond. You can see some more of the Torrigate. You can see some more of the urns. We've also got the Grace Falls, which I'll go to in a second. But aren't these plants looking absolutely beautiful? Now what we've got on the left hand side is we've got a stack slate medium urn. Again, this is a kit. You can buy this off of the website, waterfeature.shop. And this is the medium stack slate urn. The birds absolutely love this top. Because it's very, very shallow, they can get in there and cool off on a warm day. Now we've got the Grace Falls. Here's the Grace Falls. Beautiful little disappearing water feature with team lift stone. Now we come on to the fire sphere. So this used to be the communal area. We used to have all of our lunch breaks and everything out here, but now we use it more the Koi Palace or um, next to the NRG. Lovely little patio pond 
square patio pond, number of different plants, very, very simple bamboo water feature. And we've also got the small stack slate urn on a deco basin. So this is the smallest basin that we actually sell, which is the deco basin. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you over to Forsley Falls. So Forsley Falls was built in collaboration with our aspirational aquatic artist, John Adams from Modern Design. If you haven't been watching his Oasis series, you need to go and check out his channel, Modern Design Aquascaping. And look at this feature, guys. Wouldn't you want that in your back garden? Yes, it's two years old now, or it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably 18 months old. Looks a lot older than that, doesn't it? The bees are absolutely enjoying this. Lots of attention, lots of plant growth. Again, there's a few weeds in it, but who cares? A weed, definition of a weed is a plant in the wrong place. That grass in the foreground, to me, it looks natural. Don't really need to worry about it too much. As long as it's not causing any flow issues, I'm not really worried. Beautiful, beautiful water feature. Wouldn't you want that in your garden on a smaller scale? If you haven't got room for a 35 foot stream, you can have this on a three foot version. So this was part of Aquatic Art in 2022, and you're invited to Aquatic Art 2024. The link is in the description, and we're gonna have um, another aspirational artist come, and we'll also have the Pond Advisor Invitational, the Pondless Waterfall Competition. We'll show you some of these Pondless Waterfalls. So we've still got these waterfalls in, and they're looking pretty good. Some of them are looking a little bit more tired than others. This is waterfall box number five. This is Luke and Tom. They did a beautiful job. It's gonna look really, really good when that lavender comes out in flower. But wouldn't you want that small piece? It's a very, very small eight foot by eight foot area. All of these next five water features are in an eight foot by eight foot space. And I thought I would show them to you so you can see how they're updating. Let me come on to the Rackhams, James and Lee. They did a simple pondless waterfall design, very, very similar to the Aquascape style. Lovely plantings. Yes, we've been doing a little bit of um, work around these, but it's still looking great. It's still looking very natural and it's still in an eight foot by eight foot area. Beautiful water feature. I'll now take you up to the top so you can see the other pondless waterfalls. So here's the pondless waterfall from Elevate Ponds, based in Leeds. So Luke Burgess and Steve Beecham. Steve Beecham is based in near Derby and these guys won the waterfall competition and look at that, it looks amazing. They're pot of gold. If you want any more information or how these were built, check out the other videos. So this feature here was built by Nice Ponds and as you can see, it looks very, very natural. Lots of moss. A few plants are looking a little bit tired because we haven't been able to water them because there's been a lot of sand. Again, we've learnt from the Pond Advisor Invitational and we will be changing it up next year. We might even be having a summer version. So stay tuned for next year, 2024. We've got some exciting new things coming on. Now we move on to JD's feature. Welcome to Yorkshire was inspiration for this. And we've got some beautiful stacked wall emulating the Yorkshire countryside. Lovely stonework, lovely natural looking feature. And again, you can see uh, the, the, the great aquatic art and a lot of the different wood elements. We've got some dead wood, we've got some uh, different mosses and we've got some heathers and stuff. And also we've got the mystery items. Don't forget the mystery items. Again, if you want any more information about the waterfall competition, there's more, more videos out there. Let's go back down and look at the Koi Palace. So here we go. We've got the sand pit and maybe you can notice that it hasn't got a roof. So the roof of the pagoda on the, over the sandbox has actually been removed and we've turned it into a deck. So this deck is over the Koi Palace. We are still doing a lot of work on the Koi Palace. There's fish in here now. The water's lovely and clear. You may have seen some more of the other videos where I've actually got in and we've fed some of these fish. We've been doing a number of different videos around the Pond College Gardens and look at how hungry they are. They love their food. So this is the Koi Palace. We've got the filtration system behind Luna. 
So this is a great big, huge wetland filter. And as you can see, I'm doing lots of work. This is a passion project of mine. So this isn't for a paying customer. So we're not giving it all of the attention that it needs. This is not paying anything. This is not paying for itself. It's literally self-indulgement. And as you can see, maybe on the screen, we've got an emperor dragonfly that's flying around all over the wetland. We've got a log, we put that into the top of the wetland just to create it a little bit more natural, creating a bit more of a different type of ecosystem. It's looking amazing. A little bit of blanket weed, but blanket weed is part of the ecosystem. Blanket weed is mother nature's way of removing the, the nutrients. It is open to the predators. We've got a little bit of aeration on here. When we were doing the deck, then the tunnelized timber that was being sawn was going into the pond and we needed to make sure that that wasn't going to cause any complication with the fish health or anything like that. So we put on an aeration system just to make sure if you're in doubt at any time, always aerate, aerate, aerate. So as you can see on the, the back edge, we've got the bowls. The bowls are joy as I call them. And you can see we've got watercress growing out of here. So we've got a bag of watercress. That's one bag of watercress. We actually bought 10 and we put watercress everywhere on top of each pond and the koi will eat the watercress. By there, there's another bag that's giving a little bit of shelter to some babies. I don't know if you can see there's some babies in there. As you can see, it's a bit of a nursery. These babies are being born in here. So the second day that these fish went in, they spawned and the babies are already about an inch long. The fish have actually changed into more of an orca and it's amazing on, uh, they've been eating these babies, but it's natural, it's nature. If you think of a female carp or a female koi carp produces thousands and thousands of eggs to repopulate a water. So they can repopulate a water very, very quickly because they produce so many eggs. But when you've got a lot of fish, then they'll eat them. Mother nature's way of controlling the population. So now we're over the back side of the Koi Palace and as you can see the architectural walls, the bowls of joy and we've got a hippo in the form of an English Springer Spaniel. She loves it on that deck. I actually built it, one because I knew that she would enjoy it. I also knew that the Koi would enjoy it and she absolutely enjoys playing around with the fish. They love her, they associate her with food, they don't associate her with danger which is a little bit of a concern but at the same time, she does. she's not aggressive. This particular um, pet dog has been brought up with fish and she's got a respect, just like the fish have got a bit of a respect, but sometimes they can be a bit cheeky and hang on to her ears or suck her side. And then, you know, she basically tells them like a human, don't do that. Not that she does it aggressively. The first tank that we're looking at now, this is all for snails and baby chigooies. Um, you might be saying, what is a chigui? Well, it's a cross between a chagoy and a shizui. These are babies of the fish that I bought in Japan in September. You might be able to see them if you're lucky. You'll have to come to Pond College. So these ones in here aren't as warm as the Koi Palace. One, because it hasn't got the amount of shallow water. The sun is beating down on the biological media. You might be saying, Mark, what are all those circles on your pond here? Well, this is all biological media. This is all where surface area and also it creates shade so the pond doesn't go green. There's no filtration. It's just simply a little bit of aeration. And this is a passion project for Ramzorn snails, which are native to the UK. Then we come on to this vat and this is the last lot of eggs. There's um, some real small fish in here um, that are only about a couple of days old. Now we come on to the hospital tank. The hospital tank hasn't got any form of filtration, but it has gone through the cycle. We've treated these particular fish in here for parasites and also gill flukes and skin flukes. But as you can see that they're looking amazing. The filtration isn't existing. All we've got is biological media on the surface. This is a temporary pool and we're waiting for um, space to put these into another pond, either that or they can go to another loving home. But all we've got on here is we've got an aeration system, loads of biological media on the surface, we've got loads of bio balls and we've got a recirculating pump that pumps the water around. Oxygen is the most vital thing. So 
No filtration, but we've got plenty of oxygen. We've got floating islands. We've got a few plants, frog bit. We've got lots of biological media on here. Um, we've got the spawning mops, which again is surface area. Simple spawning mops, creating surface area for that biological activity to go on. So the water quality, so the water quality is really, really good. The fish are active. The pond's green. I'm not worried about green water. If you're worried about green water, watch one of my videos. Is green water safe for pond fish? And the answer is yes. It's not water clarity, it's water quality that you need to, need to look after. If you look after the water, the fish will look after themselves. So Lou loves getting up on the tank here to see these Japanese fish. We've got a number of different Japanese fish in here. We've got some four-year-olds. We've got the big fish. These are amazing fish. All of these fish came from Japan and they are really, really cool, really active fish. Some of the real big ones are about four years old. We've got a number of different Shizuis, Sankey, Showa. We've even got a Deutz Achiba for anybody that's a Koi fanatic. The Deutz Achiba, I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera. We called that one Desert Storm. Obviously we've got Charlie Chaplin, the Chagoy. Massive great big Chagoy. We've got Shoa. We've got a Hyatt Suri. Massive Shizuis. I love the Shizuis. We've got 15 baby Shizuis, Tosai in here. And this is a growing on facility. So this particular pond isn't for decorative ornamental purposes. This is literally simply like the hospital tank, cleaning or the water quality is more important than the water clarity. So on this particular pond, we've got filtration to filter dirty water rather than building a beautiful ecosystem pond like the Koi Palace will be, like the other ecosystem ponds will be. Got some um, different projects going on. We've got some biological activity going on in these um, chambers over here. We've got lots of aeration. The key to success with fish this time of the year is aeration, aeration, aeration. If you've got any concerns about your fish, always, always make sure that they've got enough oxygen. And there we have it. The Pond College update, summer 2023. But before you go, I've got an important announcement to make. We're coming up with a brand new newsletter called Ripples. If you wanna be part of the Ripple Makers community, get in touch, go to waterfeature.shop, Ripple Makers, and you can read all about it. It's a brand new newsletter with lots and lots of inspiration, product showcases, a little bit of pro tips here and there, but it's very, very much worth subscribing to that newsletter. If you're in the UK and you want any water feature products, get in touch, you know how to contact us. My name's Mark, the Pond Advisor, and until next time, I'll see you in another video.